Hello everyone, Dane here from Moving to Canada. Hope you guys are all having a good time wherever you're at in the world. Today I'm here for an exciting new video. Today we are covering the most googled questions about how to immigrate to Canada. Uh, some of you out there might be wondering, well, why are people interested in Canada? How many people move to Canada every year? Uh, there are actually a ton, a ton, a ton of people who immigrate to Canada every year. Uh, I just pulled up our uh, Canadian immigration levels plan for 20 20 to 2022. Uh, if you take a look at the numbers here, you'll see that Canada is actually uh, slated to accept more than 1 million new permanent residents over the next three years. More than 1 million. Uh, and that's just permanent residents. Uh, so that's people moving to Canada permanently. It doesn't include anyone who's coming to study, uh, so international students or people coming on work permits, that sort of stuff. Uh, that's just new permanent residents. So there are tons of people interested in starting a new life in Canada. There are many reasons for that. Uh, Canada is a very safe country. It's a country with a ton of space. It's a country that's known for being uh, very polite. It's a country with uh, great access to health care, a pretty good economy. And to some of our national treasures like this guy, Ryan Gosling. Yeah, yeah. Now you want to move to Canada, don't you? Look at this face. Mm, yep. Ryan Gosling, Canada's greatest export. But before I dwell too much on Ryan Gosling, let's get back to the topic of this video. So how to immigrate to Canada. Okay, let's jump into the most Googled questions about how to immigrate to Canada. Uh, I'm going to tackle a bunch of these right off the top. So how to immigrate to Canada from the United States, how to immigrate to Canada from Hong Kong, uh, from the Philippines, and from India. So we've got a lot of people out there wondering, how do I move to Canada from my specific country of residence? Uh, as it turns out, Canada has a bunch of immigration pathways, a whole bunch of immigration pathways, more than 100 different uh, immigration <laughs> pathways, to be clear. So uh, there are a bunch of different options for you. And Canada doesn't discriminate based on the country where you're coming from. Uh, most of Canada's immigration pathways are uh, merit-based uh, or based on a connection to Canada, uh, so family sponsorship, for example. Uh, if you're coming through one of these uh, merit-based immigration programs, uh, Canada is going to take a look at things like your education, your work experience, you know, job offers in Canada, uh, any sort of uh, Canadian experience that you might have. But what's not a determining factor is which country you're applying from. So, in fact, whether you're trying to immigrate from the U.S., Hong Kong, India, or the Philippines, uh, all of the same immigration options apply to each of you. Uh, if we're going to break down Canadian immigration into a few main camps. Uh, we've got a breakdown here on our website, and I will pop a link to this in the description of the video, uh, to three main categories uh, of immigration programs for Canada. That's permanent residence, so that's long-term immigration programs uh, like economic for, for skilled workers, uh, for people with job offers in Canada, as well as uh, family sponsorship is another huge wing of that. So people who uh, marry a Canadian permanent resident or a Canadian uh, citizen uh, who are then eligible for that family sponsorship route. Uh, children are sometimes eligible for that. Parents and grandparents have a small sector of family sponsorship as well. Uh, work permits are another big part of Canadian immigration. Hundreds of thousands of people come to Canada on work permits every year. Those are temporary work permits, uh, so generally you got to leave at the end of it, but gaining that Canadian work experience can make a lot of people eligible for these permanent residence programs, so it can be a great stepping stone towards permanent status. Uh, finally, uh, study permits. Uh, Canada is an incredibly popular destination for international students. We're going to cover that a little bit later on in this video because it is one of the top Googled questions, but there are more than 500,000 uh, international students uh, studying in Canada any given year at this point in time. Uh, right now, when I'm filming this, we're in the middle of COVID, <laughs> so that's uh, a little bit different right now, but we're expecting us to get back up to those numbers uh, once, uh, you know, the health crisis does subside. Uh, 
so if you want detailed information about uh, the uh, immigration options available to you and popular pathways for people from your country of citizenship or residence, we've actually got some detailed guides on our website. So we've got guides on moving to Canada from India, outlining uh, Canada versus the US, PNPs, that sort of stuff. Uh, we've got one for moving from the Philippines, uh, caregiver immigration. Uh, there were a lot of caregivers immigrating from the Philippines uh, back a few years ago. It's still a very popular option. Uh, a bunch of different uh, Filipino immigration options here. Uh, moving from Hong Kong, we've got a whole guide on that. That's been really popular here on our website over the last year. Uh, and finally, we've got a whole section here on moving to Canada from the United States. Uh, so top 10 questions we receive, uh, how to immigrate as a citizen, how foreign workers in the U.S. can immigrate to Canada, because that's a, a very popular question that we get a lot uh, from people who are in the U.S., maybe on an H-1B visa, a temporary work visa, who've decided maybe the U.S. isn't the <laughs> best option. I'm not sure exactly why. Uh, maybe I should try out Canada. Uh, so we've got a whole guide for you folks there as well. Uh, so again, I'm going to link to all of these in the description of the video. You can check them out on our website, movingtocanada.com. It's the number two, just like our YouTube channel name, movingtocanada.com for all of that info. So let's see what our next question is. Uh, how to immigrate to Canada as a student? Uh, as I mentioned, international students are uh, very common in Canada. We've got hundreds of of thousands of international students uh, pursuing their Canadian studies uh, on an annual basis. And there's many, many reasons for that, uh, but uh, we outline a few of them here on our website. Uh, one of the biggest advantages to studying in Canada is that the Canadian study permit also authorizes you to work while you're studying. Uh, so you can work up to 20 hours a week during your uh, full-time classes and during designated breaks you can actually work full-time hours. Uh, so that's a really great advantage for international students in Canada. The other big advantage to studying in Canada is it makes you eligible for the post-graduation work permit in most cases. Not all cases, but most times if you complete a study program in Canada, you'll be eligible for a post-grad work permit. This allows you to stay in Canada for uh, between eight months and three years after you graduate and gain Canadian work experience. That Canadian work experience, again, is a really vital stepping stone in making yourself eligible for permanent resident status. So if you want to move to Canada permanently, uh, starting off as an international student can be a really smart uh, way to begin that pathway. Uh, of course, there are many people who come to Canada uh, who study simply to uh, avail of Canada's many uh, high-class uh, universities and colleges. Uh, you know, we've got a bunch of universities ranked in the top uh, top 50 in the world in the, the time university rankings that come out every year, McGill, uh, the University of Toronto, the University of British Columbia, so some really uh, top-class top educational institutions there. If you do want to learn more about your options for studying in Canada and how to do it, uh, we've actually put together what we call the International Student Roadmap. This is an email education service. It's designed to teach you everything you need to know about studying in Canada, how to apply for your study permit, uh, how to choose a school, apply for admission, all of that sort of stuff. It's totally free. Uh, I'll pop a link in the description of the video. Uh, so you sign up and the way that it works is uh, we will send you one email a day for seven days. So you're going to get seven lessons uh, and each lesson is going to teach you uh, part of the process about becoming an international student and pursuing those studies in Canada. At the end of the seven lessons, you should have all of the information you need to make an informed decision about studying in Canada and to start pursuing that process on your own terms. Great. So let's head back to our most Googled questions. How to immigrate to Canada? Reddit. That's not a question. I'm not going to answer that. How to immigrate to Canada as a skilled worker? Uh, so this is a, a really popular question we get. As I mentioned, Canada has a ton of, uh, of different immigration options, uh, and a lot of those are positioned towards skilled workers. Uh, now, this is because uh, the 
Canadian, uh, the future of the Canadian economy is in many ways dependent on maintaining high levels of immigration. Uh, as Canada's population ages, uh, the rate of naturally, the rate of natural population increase, so that comes from uh, people being born in Canada, uh, is also decreasing. So as the population ages, there aren't as many young people in the workforce who can support uh, those aging people, uh, senior citizens, that sort of thing. Immigration is really vital to boosting the economy. Uh, and for that reason, Canada privileges in a lot of its immigration programs people who are workers, people who have uh, demonstrated uh, skilled work experience, who are also young, so they'll be able to contribute to the economy for long uh, periods of time. Uh, but that's why uh, skilled worker immigration is very popular. There are many different ways to immigrate as a skilled worker. Uh, you can start off with a work permit. You can immigrate uh, through a provincial nominee program. Uh, but one of the most popular options uh, right now for skilled workers is what's called express entry. And you'll see that right here. I've pulled up uh, the basics to express entry on our website here. Express entry is, in fact, not an immigration program in and of itself. It's a system that was introduced about five years ago to expedite uh, permanent residence applications for skilled workers. So it's specifically designed for skilled workers and to help them immigrate to Canada quickly. Uh, interestingly, express entry doesn't require you necessarily to have any Canadian experience, uh, Canadian education, to have ever lived in Canada, to have a job offer. Uh, it's uses a rather complex point system to rank candidates and you can in fact be competitive enough you can get enough points without having that connection to Canada that Canadian job offer or any of that sort of stuff uh, express entry is very uh, very complex as I mentioned has uh, this point system attached to it the comprehensive ranking system uh, if you are interested in learning more about express entry uh, I'm going to refer you to our express entry roadmap uh, we've got a lot of roadmaps going on here but the express entry roadmap once again it is totally free you can sign up on our website I'll pop a link in the description and the express entry roadmap is going to give you uh, again seven lessons by email uh, delivered straight to your inbox each lesson is going to cover one of the most important topics that you need to understand if you want to immigrate to Canada uh, at the end of the seven lessons you should have that foundational knowledge to understand you know is express entry a good option for me is this something that I should be pursuing maybe I should pursue another immigration option and you can start uh, that journey on your own uh, it should give you the knowledge that you need to start the express entry process on your own if that is a good option for you great so that's what we're covering for skilled workers. Again, remember, there are some other immigration options out there for skilled workers, uh, but that's all we're going to cover in this video. Uh, how to immigrate to Canada as a businessman is the next uh, question that we've got going on here. Uh, business and investor immigration is... Uh, uh, it does make up uh, a good amount of uh, Canadian immigration uh, each year. It's not a huge percentage. I'll just pop back over to the Canadian immigration uh, levels here. So you can see the business numbers here. It's not huge, but if you do have experience uh, as uh, you know a business owner or as uh, an investor, a senior manager, uh, you could uh, be one of the people who's able to pick up one of those slots. Uh, there are a few different types of business programs here for Canada. Uh, we've got the startup visa program for people who, uh, you know, entrepreneurs who have that big idea, who want to, uh, you know, uh, build that startup in Canada. Uh, we've got options for self-employed people. Uh, those can be quite competitive, but it is, uh, it is an option. Uh, and then we have a ton of provincial business programs. Uh, these come through the uh, provincial nominee programs that Canada operates. I'm going to show you uh, how to sort of navigate those provincial nominee programs and explain more about what they are in just a moment. But before that, I did want to touch on the one remaining <laughs> investor immigration program in Canada. Uh, so the Quebec Immigrant Investor Program is the only investment-based immigration program remaining in Canada uh, where you essentially invest your money. Uh, you don't have to start a business or anything. You simply invest a very large <laughs> sum of money. Uh, and if you make it through the program, then you will receive your Canadian permanent resident status. Uh, as you'll note here in the description, uh, the Quebec Immigrant Investor Program does require you to have net assets of at least $2 million. So it's, uh, 
it is a bit of a, a higher class of, of immigration. Uh, Canada did have some other uh, investor immigration programs in the past, uh, but they have been uh, sort of cancelled and terminated over the past few years. So that's uh, business immigration for you. Again, uh, more information, of course, available on our website. Uh, check the description. I'll pop a link to our business section right down there. Uh, and I'm going to cover these last two questions uh, in one explanation. So how to immigrate to Canada as a truck driver and how to immigrate to Canada as a nurse. Um, so again, as I mentioned, Canada privileges uh, immigration of workers in uh, a number of different ways through the immigration system. But one of the important things is determining the skill level of your occupation uh, because there are many more options for immigration for skilled workers uh, or high-skilled workers than uh, for what Canada considers to be low-skilled or semi-skilled work. Um, and the way that Canada classes these things is using the National Occupational Classification System, or your NOC code. So every single occupation, every position that you could have in Canada uh, is technically classed in the National Occupational Classification System. So you're given a four-digit number uh, that defines your uh, job title and your occupation. Uh, so there's many different uh, possibilities here. You can search them up in the, the NOC database, um, but the NOC database will also tell you, uh, is your occupation considered skilled uh, or is your occupation considered low-skilled or semi-skilled? The way that it works, uh, there are three levels of skilled occupations. It's NOC level 0, NOC level A, and NOC level B. Uh, and then level C and D are considered semi-skilled and low-skilled. Uh, for truck drivers, uh, truck drivers are actually considered a semi-skilled or a low-skilled position. So your uh, options for skilled immigration are, are limited. For example, you can't immigrate through the express entry system. However, for nurses, nurses are considered a skilled occupation. So that means that you are, in fact, uh, you can be eligible for these skilled worker streams. Now, whether you are a skilled worker or a semi-skilled or low-skilled worker, provincial nominee programs, or PNPs, uh, have options for both skilled workers and semi-skilled workers. Uh, now, provincial nominee programs, or PNPs, are sort of mini immigration programs operated by Canada's provinces and territories. So Canada has uh, 10 provinces, three territories. Of that, 11 of them operate these provincial nominee programs. Uh, so PNPs allow the provinces to determine what are my economic and my demographic needs, what do we need to pull in to contribute to our economy and to our labor force, and then they can design PNPs uh, to meet those needs. So an example might be, you know, the province of Nova Scotia, where I'm filming this video right now, uh, realizes that they have a, a shortage in nurses. They want to bring in more nurses. So they create a PNP uh, that uh, privileges nurses. Maybe it has a, a list of 10 occupations and nurses is on it. Um, so there are more than 80 PNP streams. Uh, they each operate a little bit differently. Uh, and it can be a lot to learn about, but if you are interested in learning more, head over to our PNP live tracker. Uh, and again, I'll pop a link in the description. Uh, and you see this little button here that says find the right PNP stream for you. If you click that, it'll take you down to our PNP live tracker tool. And with this tool, you can input uh, your occupation. So you see I've put in transport truck drivers here. And then uh, you might want to specify some other information here. Which province are you moving to? Is it aligned with Express Entry? Do you need a job offer? You'll see here I've specified uh, that I don't have Canadian work experience, I don't have Canadian educational experience, and I'm not living in Canada. Uh, and this tracker will then show you these are the streams that you might be eligible for. Uh, so instead of looking into 80 different PNP streams and trying to assess your eligibility, uh, you've now got this list of five PNP streams, so it's a bit more manageable. Uh, of course, this does not guarantee that you are eligible for these PNP streams, but it's a really good starting point uh, to look into those a little bit further. Uh, so uh, 
that about covers it for the most Googled questions about Canadian immigration. Of course, if you have more questions, uh, please feel free to drop them into the comments. Uh, we'll be monitoring the comments. We'll try to answer your questions there. Or who knows, we might be able to do another video in the future uh, looking into one of your specific Canadian immigration questions. Uh, as always, if you enjoy this video, if you learn something from it, if you want to uh, be notified when we post more content, uh, hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the like button. We always appreciate the support. Uh, we're always trying to get informative content out to a wider audience. So that really helps us out there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we will see you next time. We've got a video.